as the history of the previous three decades have shown, security arrangements between the GCC countries have become an indispensable component of the region's security structure. The GCC ultimate security goal is to protect its members from terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, nuclear proliferation, and external aggression. We have, since the inception of the GCC, taken on a preventive diplomacy approach to head off regional conflict. This approach is distinctive to our needs in three ways. First, the GCC diplomacy is based on a clear and transparent commitment to conflict prevention and resolution through the explicit assertion of peaceful intentions, respect of international law, and a steadfast dedication to codes of conduct between nations. Secondly, the GCC countries are fully aware of the dangers that arise when states base their international relationship on exportation of ideologies. We believe that exploiting diplomacy for unjust territorial or political ambitions leads to disruption of regional understanding, extortion, and mistrust. If the diplomacy of expansion is destructive, then the diplomacy of state-sponsored state -sponsored incitement of citizens against their own political order is just as destructive. The GCC states have continued to pursue dialogue with their neighbors and others to create a collective regional diplomacy free from the sources of tensions and dangers of political ideologies, all in accordance with international law and the United Nations Charter. And thirdly, the GCC states are aware of their strategic significance and their international responsibilities and obligations. We have partnered with the NATO, the European community, and other regional security institutions to promote stability not only in the Gulf, but in the greater, greater Middle East as well. While the preventive diplomacy was the modus operandi in the 80s and 90s, the last decade witnessed the birth of a more robust, confident, and provo proactive GCC diplomacy. The GCC has taken the lead in numerous areas, promoting the Arab Peace Initiative and supporting the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people for a viable and contiguous state with the East Jerusalem as its capital, organizing a donors conference for Yemen to promote economic and political reform and defeat terrorism, poverty, and disease, supporting the political process in Iraq and working for its full reintegration in the Arab world, calling on Iran to fully implement the United Nations Security Council resolutions and the IAEA's requirements, while recognizing the right of all states to develop peaceful nuclear facilities within the oversight and safeguards of the IAEA and international requirements. So these are the clear and present dangers as we see them. What do the medium term holds for us uh, in the GCC? The most crucial challenge to the GCC in the medium term is our over-reliance on one source of income. It is imperative that we succeed in diversifying our source of income in order to minimize risk and secure future revenues. Not only is our dependence on oil as our primary source of income dangerous in the long term, but our complete dependence on it as our only source of energy is also unsustainable. For our part, we in Kuwait have initiated plans to develop a peaceful nuclear energy project and have ratified the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, NPT, and related IAEA safeguards agreements, including the additional protocols. We have also signed and ratified most of the international safety and security conventions and agreements. We are working closely with the IAEA to complete accession to the remaining ones and to establish the requisite comprehensive legal framework in relation to assuring availability of uh, nuclear fuel supply. Kuwait's policy is to rely solely on commercial and international agreements, and thus not to engage in the development of any indigenous capacity for sensitive parts of the nuclear fuel cycle without prejudice to 
our rights under the NPT. Toward this end, Kuwait supports current international effort to develop complementary multilateral approaches to assure nuclear fuel supply and services while safeguarding against proliferation. The Kuwaiti government has thus pledged $10 million to complete the $150 million capital required to realize this project. Kuwait is also an observing member of the US-led Global Nuclear Energy Partnership and is planning to join as a full member soon. However much we are able to wean ourselves from over-dependence on oil for our national income, we recognize that for the foreseeable future, hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon revenues will remain an important part of our national economies. The challenge will be how to mitigate the impact of the fluctuations in oil prices on our national budgets and development plans. Our diversification plans are certainly one prong of this strategy. The other prong drives from our effort to stabilize the oil market, therefore, therefore, therefore uh, thereby creating greater economic certainty as we draft our national budgets. As you know, the world consumes 86 million barrels of oil a day. Yet more and more, the price of this commodity is influenced not by physical market of crude oil barrel traded in New York, London, or elsewhere, but in a state by speculators trading paper barrels and playing the arbitrage opportunities. As any economist could attest, when oil becomes a financial instrument, the resultant inflow of capital are related to physical supplies and demand inevitably results in a broader bandwidth of fluctuating prices. This instability creates indigestion for budget planners and consequently wreaks havoc on development plans. From the consuming states' perspectives as well, long-term stable oil prices at fair values allow business to plan investments and economic activity growth. As a collective body, the GCC remains committed to an oil policy that provides energy security for the world through maintenance of a stable equilibrium in oil market at a price level that stimulates economic development in both producing and consuming nations. We have demonstrated during numerous crises, both in region and internationally, that we are credible and reliable suppliers of hydrocarbon to the world. Global economic stability is vital to the stability of our own local markets. So it is in the GCC best interest that the price of oil remains stable in the long run. With one-tenth of the world oil proven reserves, the state of Kuwait is steadfast in its commitment to maintaining as well as increasing its space spare capacity, uh, production capacity to continue to be a reliable source of energy for the world. Only states such as Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates will invest billions of dollars to increase production capacity and leave it idle in order to comfort, comfort oil markets that in case of curtailment of production anywhere else in the world, additional barrel of oil can be quickly be brought to the market to st stabilize the global economy. No other country will do that.